I'm going to list off a series of movies, and you tell me what they all have in common. Ford v. Ferrari, Die Hard, Top Gun, Death Wish, Death Wish from 2018, True Lies, Lethal Weapon, and Taken. Aside from all these films featuring men and having action scenes, they fit a loose subgenre called dadcore. Vanity Fair describes dadcore like this. Dadcore is more narrowly defined by being rip-snorting action movies, many of them hardcore and rated R, in which the plot is vaguely defined by a male character seeking revenge or vengeance or some kind of justice, spiritual or otherwise. Usually outside the letter of the law, think Taken or True Lies, a movie that raised the standard for dadcore epics to come. The genre most commonly associated with dadcore is action movies. If one is not as well versed in action movies, this may prompt one to believe that all action movies fit under the label of dadcore. But it's not as broad as that. Taken, for example, would be considered dadcore, but something like Atomic Blonde would not. Both films involve heroes fighting a criminal ring, but Taken's main character is a father and ex-agent, while Atomic Blonde's main character is a single and sexually active woman, who is also an active MI6 field agent. But there's more to it than gender, age, sexuality, or marital status. Action films that wouldn't pass for dadcore usually have a sense of postmodernism or are critical of hierarchical structures. Most war films, for example, are favored as dadcore considering how most of them are funded by the Department of Defense, and are not only uncritical of the military apparatus, but will even go so far as to endorse it, with films such as Twelve Strong or American Sniper. By that same token, films that do criticize war beyond an us-versus-them narrative tend not to fit dadcore. There are a few outliers to this with films like Platoon or Born on the Fourth of July, but don't expect the dadcore crowd to watch something like Come and See or Grave of the Fireflies. Another type of film that dadcore favors is police movies, but with the same scrutiny as war movies. Common dadcore cop movies like Lethal Weapon feature cops who break the rules, but act more out of wanting to finish a case rather than actually fighting the system. They do not break the rules because the system is broken, but because they believe more brutal methods that subvert the law are correct. And in many of these movies, they are often proven to be correct for breaking these rules. Dadcore films can feature sexuality, but only the rigid heteronormative depictions of sex. This means that women in these movies are often objectified through a male gaze, as with the obvious example of the striptease moment in True Lies. The sex appeal of these films tend not to go further than that. This is because dadcore films wouldn't include sex scenes beyond a few seconds with minimal nudity, and are usually reduced to only showcasing the female body more than anything. Although it should be noted that while many dadcore films are viewed as being heterosexual, a substantial handful contain homoerotic elements. Commando, for example, is regarded as dadcore, but it does have a lot of homoerotic elements. Arnold Schwarzenegger plays John Matrix, a single father who has to rescue his daughter from terrorists. He befriends a woman in his adventure, but they have zero sexual tension. There is, however, a weird dynamic between John and his nemesis Bennett. Their final duel is just loaded with so much sexual talk about stabbing and very suggestive visuals of penetration. It's so ridiculous that it's honestly such an adorably absurd action movie. There are many more homoerotic dadcore movies like Top Gun and Point Break, but the bottom line is that most dadcore movies will keep their homoeroticism smoothed over with a glaze of surface-level heterosexuality. Some dadcore movies also have a vibe that can be described as... cranky. A prime example of this can be seen in the 2018 remake of Death Wish. Bruce Willis plays a man who loses his wife to gun-toting gangsters and believes the only way to stop them is if he acquires a gun and kills all of them. Willis's character is portrayed as a man who is annoyed with the police not being more vicious. This leads to him getting really into guns to like a goofy degree. And it also makes him believe that vigilante justice will restore peace to Chicago, as well as helping him become a real man. No gun control will do for this cowboy. The crankiness of the modern world carries into all of the characters in this movie. The protagonist's father-in-law boasts about defending his property and how that makes you really manly. 
Dean Norris plays a detective who thinks that going on a diet is the worst because real men eat pizza and think gluten-free foods are yucky. So yeah, Death Wish has a whole cranky old man vibe going for it. Dadcore films can also take a more tactile approach to their narratives that focus more on the mechanical and the scientific. Films like Ford v Ferrari and Apollo 13 would fit nicely into dadcore for the focus of dads who are engrossed in tech. These films are a bit unique as they are not so much focused on action as they are on assembly, innovation, competition, and survival. Not all dadcore heroes have to wield guns. Some of them use wrenches, but like in a non-violent way for actually like fixing and building stuff. The other odd thing about dadcore movies is that there is a lingering myth that they are rare. This thought generally pops into the minds of dads who do not watch many movies in general. So when one dadcore movie rises with enough marketing appeal to get dads to watch it in the theater, some of these dads will lament that you don't see movies like these nowadays. Even that Vanity Fair article I referenced tried to frame itself in a way that dadcore movies were dying out. Although, to be fair, that article was written about nine years ago. And I feel like this should be brought up because as it stands now, there is no shortage of dadcore movies. I mean, Netflix is a treasure trove of dadcore action pictures, with such films as The Gray Man and Extraction. Prime Video has not only its fair share of dadcore movies, but also dadcore TV, with shows like Jack Ryan, Reacher, and The Terminal List. And there are always direct-to-video movies. There are... So, so many dadcore films that come out on DVD every month that there should be an official section for it at Redbox. It should be mentioned that just because films carry the association of dadcore, it does not mean that these films will appeal to all dads or only to dads. So don't expect that a Blu-ray of Commando will be the perfect gift for your dad come Father's Day or his birthday. This is really just a useful shorthand for referring to a particular type of movie that fits a particular type of demographic. So when the new Gerard Butler action film that comes out is referred to as Dadcore, it should be pretty clear what type of film is being talked about here. You know the two of us, we are the closest living out here. Jenny and me putting ice cream on each other's noses and feeding the deer. Jenny and me, we were going to build a normal life here. A carefree existence of laughter and play. But General Kirby, he led them right to us. And then the bastards took her away. Mm. 